your father saw the worst that mankind has to offer. No question. Um, how did he make a film then that had the universe, how did he respect what he had seen? He, he knew what the Holocaust meant, but he didn't want to do a night in fog like Alain René. He wanted to do something that was acceptable and accessible for an American audience. How did he bridge what he knew with what he was trying to accomplish? When we started to work on the Diary of Anne Frank, um, my father asked me to come over to 20th Century Fox. I was then working with Jack Webb and directing Alfred Hitchcock and Peter Gunn and television. And, and Dad said, would you like to work with me on the film? And of course, I wanted to. And he was on the jury of the Cannes Film Festival that year. And, it was, and we went to Cannes. It was the year of the 400 Blows and the Seventh Seal and these great films. But then we drove to Munich and got up the next morning, went to this little town 30 kilometers from Munich where he hadn't been since April of 1945, and it was Dachau. And we went to the camp where he had been among the first to enter and filmed and captured really the evidence on film of what took place there. And it was extraordinary to be there with my father at that place. And then we went on to Normandy and went to Juneau Beach where he landed and visited all of those sites where he and his unit had been after D-Day. And then to Amsterdam, we went to a little town, I mean, a little office in downtown, rang the bell, and the door was opened by this tall man with gray hair, very, he'd been, Otto Frank had been an officer in the German army in the first war. And he invited us in and introduced to his, to his wife, Fritzi, his two daughters, of course, and his wife had died at Belsen. And we sat and had coffee. And he was looking at the man, my father, who was going to tell his daughter's story. And after a moment, he stood up and he walked over and opened a filing cabinet and brought something out wrapped in cloth and put it in front of us and unfolded the cloth. And there was this red plaid book um, on his diary with the photographs and her handwriting and the photographs of the movie stars she admired. And then we went to the hiding place and Otto Frank took us up to where the bookcase was and took us to where they had come to take them away. And uh, he told us the story and he said that they asked him for the, his briefcase and shook it out on the floor and it had money and jewelry and it also had all these papers and they scooped up the money and they scooped up the jewelry and they left the papers on the floor and they left. And of course they left the evidence and it was this girl's voice which would become so much more powerful over time than their Fuhrer's voice.